What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a review on my Oztent RV3. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I'll give you a complete pros and cons list. All right guys, so this is the Oztent RV3 uh, packed away in the carrying bag that is included. It's about 79 and a half inches long, about 10 and a half inches wide, roughly eight and a half inches tall. So the RV3 weighs about 47 and a half pounds. Uh, so light enough to be handled by one person and also a lot lighter than a standard rooftop tent. Uh, over a rooftop tent, you're gonna save, you know, probably close to 100 pounds. As far as the storage bag goes, it is not necessarily listed as waterproof, um, and it isn't. There's companies that do sell waterproof bags for these. I haven't found I really needed it. Uh, the way it packs up, the PVC floor actually ends up being what it would be on the outside. So even if it soaks through the bag, your tent's still dry on the inside. And I've had this thing in quite a few rainstorms on top of the truck, and when you go to set up camp, tent is still all nice and dry. Uh, I do want to say that I did pay full price for this. It's not sponsored in any way. I bought it and I've used it since July of 2020. So it's been about a year and seven months. Uh, so these are my thoughts on it. I'm going to go ahead and get the camera on a tripod and I'm going to go ahead and do a real time setup for you guys so you can see exactly how fast it is. <laughs> All right, so as you saw, the setup uh, pretty closely is true to their advertised 30 second setup. Obviously you can do things a little quicker, a little slower, depending on how you move. But in general, it is a very fast setup. And what I like about this is you don't really have to stake this tent down to get its shape. And that's kind of the reason there's five different models, RV1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I chose the RV3 because the frame actually fills out the whole tent. So right now, um, if it's not super windy or anything like that, I mean, you could just leave this thing just like this. You don't have to put any stakes out. You don't have to do anything like that. Um, it's ready to sleep in as is. The floor is completely waterproof. Uh, I believe it's a 510 gram PVC floor. So it's tough, durable. Obviously you don't set it up on top of broken glass and stuff like that, but just regular ground and rocks and stuff like that, you should be just fine. Not gonna have to worry about water intrusion. You can see the floor comes up on the sides. So obviously you're not gonna put this thing in a puddle of water, but you have a little more protection uh, if water were to start puddling up. The frame of this thing, it's, a, it's like an aluminum extrusion type, uh, and it's really, really kind of a genius design. So what you do is when you saw me stand this thing up like I did, and then you lock out these arms. So they slide down and then those would actually fold in um, and then let this thing fold down like that. As far as windows and ventilation go, they are 65 gram, uh, no seam mesh, uh, super fine stuff. Uh, you can't expect any bugs to get through this really nice and durable. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tear easy. I mean, you can see it's it really kinda is a thick material. And those are on all the windows. You get two side windows. This can zip all the way up. And this window can zip all the way up. And then our back window, uh, we'll go out there and show you how that works. Okay, so here at the back of the tent, we have a very large window that you can utilize for air. Your options are you can either take these guy wires that are already attached um, and you can string them down to the ground and that way you can have full ventilation without the worry of any rain or anything like that getting in there or you can just roll it up and then you have plenty of ventilation again the no cm mesh in the back and it really kind of opens things up in there and really makes it feel even bigger than it is, even though it is already a large space inside. 
along the outside here you will find these little pouches uh, and these have some pre-attached guy wires that you can run down to the ground and stake and it really helps with the whole stability of the tent i mean you can imagine if you're in some pretty heavy winds the frame will end up shaking you know from the wind hitting the walls but you run these guy wires down there's one on each back corner and then you have one in the front here as well and on the other side and of course between those four and then your ground ones i mean this thing is just not going anywhere in any sort of windstorm i've had it some pretty heavy winds on the beach in north carolina and also in colorado uh, we had some pretty heavy winds and once i put those guy wires in it wasn't flapping in the breeze wasn't making a ton of noise uh, it was just it was very comfortable and you felt safe in there even in inclement weather they also got these little bend guys up here uh, they got little flaps that you can close i've honestly pretty much always left them open because unless it's going to be raining and i don't have the front awning out or something like that it's kind of nice you can let some air uh, flow out the top as far as our setup footprint on the rv3 it is about 94 and a half inches uh, from this way and 78.7 back and then a max standing height of 74 to 75 inches. I mean, it is an extremely large space in there. You could probably uh, you could probably fit a king size bed in there if you'd like. Usually use a full size bed, which is I think uh, 53 inches wide and 76 inches long or something like that. But anyways, when that's set up in here, we still have space right here for clothes, uh, shoes, and on this end we have room for our bags and everything like that. And it just makes it super nice having a big bed space. You're not in a not in a small area all your stuff's easy to get to and access you can change in the morning before you get out into the campsite don't have to go in the truck and get your bag our exterior walls here are completely waterproof it is an eight ounce ripstop poly cotton canvas and i mean we've had this thing in complete downpours uh, actually when we camped on the beach in north carolina last year and not a single drop came in uh, which I was very thankful for because <laughs> it hadn't really been in some heavy rain like that before and I wasn't sure how it was going to do, uh, but we were bone dry in there. Then I'm sure you guys noticed I rolled up these side doors. So the screen, you can roll those up if you want to have it completely open. Um, and then you can also roll the canvas up so they're out of the way. That way they're not the flaps that you have to walk in and out of. They do have an included spot where if you camp at a campground or something like that, you can unzip this and run a power cord into your tent charge your phones or whatever maybe you have a power bank in the truck and you could run a long cord uh, to the inside of the tent for some power i normally just bring a battery pack in there and charge my phone that way and i also use the battery pack to run these little lights cheap little amazon like ten dollar lights uh, they're pretty awesome they do have a couple different settings but they just plug in a little usb plug right there uh, turn those on gives nice kind of ambient lighting in the tent that's not absolutely blinding and uh really just kind of makes it even that much more cozy all right so if you've been looking into this tent i'm sure you've seen that it actually has an awning that comes off the front here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and set that up for you I will say this is a much easier process with two people um, just because you're kind of balancing between things. Okay, so that's the simplest version of setting up this front awning. Just two simple poles, two guy wires. I would recommend staking just the very back of the tent if you are going to set these up because as you see when I pull on this, you see the back of the tent raised there. You just kind of need some uh, opposing forces to get everything nice and tight. Now they give you this guy wire here so you can have a reverse peak uh, downward and then that will actually let any rain uh, keep that from being able to pull up up there. So another thing they sell are these ridge poles here. And it's basically a support that runs across the awning to keep it from drooping and they actually sell these intermediate poles that are a little longer and they call it so you can peek it out and it'll be shaped up and down which will also help with water runoff i will definitely say the front awning is something i do not set up all the time uh, but the few times that i have set it up it has been super nice if it's calling for some rain you got a nice dry place that you can get your shoes off get inside and not track a bunch of stuff into your tent 
They also sell a footprint, uh, which is the size of the tent and also the size of the awning space. I do own one. I did use it once and it was great, but as you can imagine, it gets very dirty uh, depending on where you're camping and it just wasn't worth it for me to bring it with me anymore. So it kind of just sits in the garage. So they do actually also sell uh, sidewalls. So you can close in this whole front awning area. There's actually some zippers right here you can see. Uh, and then zippers all along this top edge, kind of just like any other outdoor awning uh, if you're familiar with how they work. Another great thing about this front awning, if you have an SUV where like the back hatch opens up, you could set your tent up like this and then actually back the truck up and open up the hatch and probably just kind of tie this thing around it. You probably don't even need these poles. Uh, and then you really kind of have your own little your own little space. You know, you got your tent right there, you got the back of the truck, you probably maybe got a swing out you can cook on. I mean, just overall, it's a great setup, uh, whether you have an SUV or a truck or anything like that. All right, guys, we'll talk about pros and cons. So we'll go with the pros first. It's easy to set up. Um, it's, it's pretty close to true, a 30 second tent. If you don't count, you know, the fact that it's strapped on top of your truck or anything like that, when it's down on the ground, you know, 30 seconds, you can have it up as a practice. Pretty easy. It's lighter than a rooftop tent, like I said before. You're saving quite a bit of weight. Instead of having a big, heavy weight on top of your truck, you can have just, you know, 40 something pounds up there. So that's that was pretty huge for me as well. It also leaves your roof wide open so you can have a canoe or something else. You know, some rooftop tents have roof racks and stuff like that. But for the most part, it's, it's really kind of inhibiting what you can put on top of your truck. And also it's on there, you know, may, maybe year round if you don't feel like pulling it off. This is easy to take on and off, stored in the garage, in the house, wherever you want. The space inside, uh, that is probably my favorite thing. Uh, just having all your stuff in there, everything you could possibly need right there with you where you sleep. So that one's huge for me. I was concerned about protection from the elements, but it has more than proved its ability to keep you dry, safe in the wind, and just overall feel like you have a safe, comfortable place to get away from the elements in. It's been durable. I haven't ever put down a protection tarp on the ground for it. I haven't noticed any sort of punctures in the floor. Sometimes campsites have little bits of glass that I'm sure I don't see, and none of that has damaged this tent at all. All right, now we'll move on to the cons. My main con with this tent is the packed up size. If you're in a mid-sized truck with like a five foot bed, like mine, like a Tacoma, this just doesn't fit in there. Especially if you have a camper shell, it'll have to hang out the back, which I've done plenty of times and I used to do. I don't mind, I'll just leave the back window up. If you have a bed rack or something like that, you can just let it hang out an extra foot. But I just throw it on the roof most of the time uh, and that's no big deal to me. Maybe a deal breaker for some people. It was a, a pretty big con when I was looking at buying it. One thing that might be huge, depending on where you camp, needing level ground that uh, free of debris and rocks and everything like that. Most campsites, at least anywhere I've been, there's always at least one level spot. So there's always somewhere you can set up and end up sleeping. And maybe if it's a little off, you know, a little off kilter, it's really not that big of a deal. You're still gonna get a decent night's sleep. Uh, just, it's not the same, you know, rooftop tent on a truck. You can level the truck out and just be kind of good to go. As far as care goes, this isn't really necessarily a con. I guess it's something you should just be aware of versus a rooftop tent. So obviously a big plus of a rooftop tent, it's never on the ground, it doesn't get debris from the ground, mud, you know, dirt, sand, whatever. This goes on the ground. So when you're packing it up, you're gonna have to brush it off. You're gonna have to just kind of make sure it's clean. You don't want that stuff packed up in there and uh, making your bag smell all funky or getting mildew or moisture and then end up causing mold. One big thing I see other people uh, say as a con is rooftop tents, you're up away from animals or any sort of ground critters or anything like that. Uh, with this, you are right down on ground level with them. But I mean, let's be honest, you're camping with a group of people and you guys are making loud noise and you know being loud all night or got music playing. Animals have already decided to not come anywhere near your campsite. Maybe if you're camping out west with a higher bear presence than we have on the east coast, uh, and you leave food out or anything of that nature, then you'll probably end up with a, an animal around camp and it might kind of freak you out. But in the end, that's kind of your fault for not following proper procedure as far as store, food storage goes. All right guys, so to sum it all up, overall, I love the tent. Uh, I've slept a lot of nights in it and I really don't have any regrets as far as a purchase goes. I really like the size of the RV3. There is five different sizes, so go out there, 
figure out what size works best for you. What I did was actually take masking tape and figure out what the footprint was from the website and I put it on my floor, kind of laid in it. Sounds stupid, but you can figure out which size really works best for you. I have a buddy, he's got an RV5, which is the giant one, but he's also got his girlfriend and two dogs. So that just makes more sense for them. Uh, they need more space. Just me and Amanda in this, I think the RV3 is actually even more space than we need. If I were to go with the RV2, I think the roof's lower and I wanted to be able to stand up. So the RV3 was clearly kind of middle ground for me. It seemed like it would work the best. So as always guys, I really appreciate you watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't and we'll see you in the next video.